do people? I'm back and I am at work today. Um, I'm doing a little bit of fiberglassing. So as usual, I forgot the camera or I forgot to you know, start recording stuff. Um, but I'm gonna make a seat unit now. I've already put the gel coat in, in, the, uh, in the seat unit and I have just put the first coat of resin in which I'm then gonna just start and drop some, um, uh, some fiberglass bits and pieces in. Um, so it's gonna be quite a uh, quiet video, I think, because it's gonna to have to be done on time-lapse. Um, this takes such a long time, and because you only have a very s sort of small time, time limit before the resin starts to gel, I haven't really got too much time to kind of go through it, because um, quite a, it's not a complex shape, but it's uh, slightly more com com complex than just a flat panel. So there's the seat unit, uh, there's the mould, look. Nice big beefy mould, uh, which I've had, I've had this for about eight years now, this seat unit mould. Um, but yeah. So we've got the gel coat in there, which is the grey. And then we've got just a coat of resin, which is, um, which I'm now going to sort of start and lay up on. So uh, I'll kind of spin you around and, uh, and yeah, have a watch. Yeah. Right, let me get some cloth. So the way I like to do it is try and be as prepared as I can be. So I have a few bits of um, blue cloth for when I get in a for when I get in a mess, and I do all the time. Um, yeah, and kind of have my fiberglass kind of ready as such, and uh, and yeah, off I go. So like I say, this is just just um, yeah, Lloyd's approved polyester resin and I am going to use 2% hardener which is what they what they say that gives you about I think I said I think it gives you about 20 minutes ish at sort of a half decent room temperature um, and then the first layer that I'm going to put in is, is like um it's a really, really lightweight mat, and that kind of helps reduce sort of print through. So print through, they sometimes if if it gets, if you was to paint the seat or if you was to paint fiberglass black, and the heat heat soak comes into play, then you might start seeing some strands of um, fiberglass mat through. You know, kind of coming up through it. So, um, so we put a little bit of um, a little bit of finer stuff in to try and combat that. Um, but yeah. But also, what I like to do is get some of this stuff, which is really short cut strands. But all I do is kind of shake it into the sharp or the sharper sort of corners just to try and avoid some air voids as such you don't you don't have to do this I've just always done it really um, but yeah so I shake a little bit of that into to be fair I've actually <laughs> I've actually done that the wrong way round. I should have put the um, I should have put the uh, the sort of surface tissue in first, but it's, it's no bother. This uh, this seats for me actually. This is going to this is going to go on the um, on the Honda on the Hornet. So by the time I've finished messing around with it and it's uh, all primed and looking. Splendid, it'll be all right. So that's it, yeah. So put some of that in, and then, like I say, a bit of this lightweight. This is 80 grams, this one. So we just stick that in there, like that. So, light, there we go, that'll do. 
and then I will just start to wet that out. There's hundreds and hundreds of uh, how-tos on fiberglassing. This isn't a how-to, none of my stuff is a how-to really. It's just how I do it. How I've kind of come to do these things and take of it what you uh, what you will. But um, but yeah, I found this is kind of this will yeah work. This works well for me, so I uh, I continue to do it this way. I've got to say the resin is very very potent. I usually wear a mask as well. Um, it's, it is pretty well ventilated in here. But what I tend to do is hold the resin while I'm working, bloody hold it just under my nose. <laughs> That's because I'm trying to do two things at once again and that brain cell, don't like it. It goes into, uh, goes into shutdown. <laughs> but yeah, so I'll do this. And then we'll get the mat in. So the mat that I'm going to use is 350 gram. So they they measure it by weight per square meter, I think. I'm pretty sure that's how it's done. Um, yeah. So the heavier it is, the um, you know the thicker the mat is, so to speak. So see. So. I generally do um, three layers of 350 or you can do one layer of 350 and a layer of 400 um, but yeah it's your own, your own preference really. So right I'm gonna stick it on time lapse because basically what I'm doing is exa exactly the same um, with, with the, 350, the 350 tear a lump off. Also I like to tear my stuff rather than cutting it if I can because I find when it's torn the um, when you do different sections of, of mat it just it just melt you know it just flows into each other better. So um, so there you go there's a there's a 350 look that's a lot a lot more a lot more mat in there. So yeah, just lay that in. And uh, just start and wet it out, you see. Not rocket science. Nothing I do is. <laughs> it's all pretty simple stuff. But you do, um, yeah. You still, you still got to be careful and kind of know what you you're trying to achieve. You know, it's uh, it's certainly not for everyone. You have to be reasonably quick and reasonably, um, you know, confident in what you're trying to do. But yeah, so we get that first layer. In. And that's it, I am going to stick you on time lapse now. <sighs> Look, covered already. Uh, I'm going to stick you on time lapse and I'm going to wet this lot out and we'll, we'll come back in a, in a bit.
Right, okay, so this is the last layer. Third layer in here. I thought I'd just record this actually because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Well, I find it interesting. <laughs> yeah, so you'd have seen um, a roller being used. Um, that, that just gets rid of, uh, helps get rid of air bubbles. You can pretty much do it with a brush to be fair. You don't, you don't need the roller at all. Um, you know, you can get just a good, uh, just as good results really with the, uh, with the brush, just, you know, just being, just go over it quite carefully and, uh, and yeah, you can, you can do pretty well just like that. Just pull that out, stop that corner from just bulking. But yeah. Yeah, fiberglass in, it's, it's, it's okay. Your limit really, like I said in the other video, is just your imagination. to it it's not too not too bad it's quite full-on you know you can't stop and message the wife or you know if someone comes in and starts talking you just you just have to carry on because you really don't you don't want it to start and go off when you're sort of halfway through that's, uh, that's not fun. So you just have to sort of get your head down and do it, you know? Right. Get that one in there. Just put a little bit there where it's... Uh, the two meat. Let's just stick that down. Jesus Christ, I'm in a mess. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't think you won't, um, well, the professionals, maybe they don't get in a, a mess like me. trying to do is get it sort of like quite consistent as well with with the overlaps so that we've got a reasonably even sort of thickness of of, um, of mat so Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. That's it. Maybe, uh, let's see what that looks like. Once you, uh, once you start wetting it out, you can kind of see the thicknesses as well. You can see where it's maybe a little bit thinner than other places because of the slight difference in, in colour. So we'll get this, uh, we'll get this all wetted out, and then I'll have a look.
and then when, when you roll it, it, it brings the resin up through the previous layer as well. So like there, if, I don't know if you can see, you can't really see because of the light, but it looks a little bit sort of dry and patchy there, but once I whiz the roller over it, that'll pull all that resin up through it. And we should be all right. There we go. So, you know, a little bit, just a little bit shy there, actually. Let's put a little bit in there. Sorry, it's, uh, I'm concentrating again, so... <laughs> so there's a bit of silence again. But that's probably not, probably not a bad thing either. Right, there we go. You're okay to trim it this far into it. Because uh, you've got so you've got so much um, mat already down, you um, you won't see that edge, that hard edge. Sometimes you can get a little bit of print through via a hard edge. Um, so as a rule of thumb, you don't want the hard edge when you start laying it up. But, uh, well, that's just what I think. I mean, you can do, do whatever, really. There we go, look. And we'll just try and bring that resin through. It's gonna need a bit of resin popping on the top, but. Is coming through actually. Really and truly, I should do another layer over the whole lot like this just to pull some of the resin through, but it's going to be fine for what I need. It'll be, it'll be all right. Quite a nice noise it makes as well. <laughs> Quite therapeutic in its own odd sort of way. Maybe, maybe not. So yeah, so um, I did do another seat last week. Um, that's out of the mould. I will grab it and show you. Um, I pulled it out of the mould this morning, ready to do, uh, ready to get the mould ready for this one. And yeah, and actually, one of these seats, uh, when I first started doing them, actually went to a company which you may or may not have heard of, um, Cognito Moto, on their. Um, I think it was probably one of their very first um, CB750s they built, um, a black one, and uh, yeah, yeah, the guy Devon, I think, he had two seat units, and uh, and yeah, it still still floats around on the interweb on on the interweb now. So yeah, quite exciting. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> Not that exciting, but you know. Right. I would say we are done. Inside looks neat. 
like I say, slightly, slightly too much resin in the actual seat bowl now, but I'm going to go with that. That's uh, that's fine. So that was a layer of the um, the 80 gram, the first layer, and then three layers of uh, 350. I hope I've done three layers. I think I have. <laughs> But yeah, that's it. And we'll uh, crack that one out when it's, uh, when it's cured. I'll leave this at least over the weekend to cure up. There you go, you can see, you can see in, the, in, in the picture that that's not quite as glisteny, glossy as is that bit, but like I say, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Inside's nice and neat. No sticky up bits to, to get me. And uh, yeah. That's all right, that. There you go, look, there's the other one. Yep, all the insides nice. Again, no spiky bits that are gonna, you know, make you have a bad day. <laughs> but yeah. So that's the outside look. That little line down there is a split line from the mould. That's just got yellow, yellow filleting wax in there. Uh, sorry, <laughs> too close. Head's too close to the camera. Yeah, there we go. And now I'll just uh, I'll just trim that around, and that's uh, that's ready then. All I do is block this seam out, block that out with a bit of. Uh, you know, about 120 all the way down there. And, uh, and yeah, that's it, it's done. Yeah, really nice looking seat, really nice shape actually. When I, when I made this, there was nothing else like it. And uh, it was made to actually go on the, um, on the little Yamaha XS, uh, but it goes really nice on, on loads, of, loads of bikes. It goes really nice on, on flat top, tank bikes, yeah? But yeah, anyway, there you go. There you go, a bit of fiberglassing. Um, all done, another seat, and the airbox is done, so I've had a good, good afternoon, really. Um, but yeah, I just thought you might like to uh, sort of have a little insight in, in how, it, how it's all done. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know, but uh, like I said, there's hundreds of videos out there on YouTube on, on fiberglassing, and I'm sure I've, um, you know, done bits wrong and not quite right or whatever, but uh, there you go, that's how, that's how I do it, and it served, served me quite well, so um, I, I'll continue to do that. But, uh, but anyway, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, just, uh, just uh, the usual, really, just, you know, your support's mega, and, uh, and, and, you know, hopefully I'll continue to do little updates. Um, like I say, it is hard for me because I do have a full-time job and a family and whatnot. So um, I don't always get the, the time to actually uh, kind of set the camera up and do a bit and, and you know, it just, just takes so much long, longer. I'm usually kind of in and out and around as quick as I can to get something done before I go home. But uh, anyway, a little bit of fiberglass in. Um, not sure what we're gonna do next. Um, still got loads of stuff to do. Uh, I'm gonna probably, probably stay and paint the little Honda um, radiator cows. Uh, they're done, uh, they were, they were um, uh, high build primed and whatnot, and they've worked out really well. So I'm gonna, gonna fire some color on it. Any color, I don't know, I don't know. What do you reckon, pink, pink? I keep, I keep saying pink as a joke, but I did a little drawing, got the old, uh, the old internet crayons out and done a little pink and I was like, oh yeah, maybe, maybe we'll do the Hornet pink, but, um, but who knows? But yeah, so I'm going to stay and do that, and, uh, and yeah, just thanks for, for joining us and watching us, and uh, I'll see you again. And there we go, really quickly, look. I've just thrown some paint on them, uh, the uh, radiator covers that we made. So.
So that, I don't, yeah, I very much doubt that's going to be the colour of the bike. It's just, just some colour that we had kicking around. So I've just fired a couple of coats of colour on it, a couple of coats of lacquer, and that's, um, that'll be ready to uh, take a mould off. So, you know, we've got a nice glossy finish, so we can take a mould off there. Yeah, it looks all right. I'm pleased with the shape. That's, um, don't worry about the dirt in it. <laughs> don't worry about that. We're not, um, we're not going for pristine finishes. But yeah, the, the shapes, shapes come out well. Yeah, pleased with them. 